If you love Naraka Blade Point but you're tired of getting outplayed every time you queue up, then stick around because today we're gonna up your game. Hey everyone, it's OSK, and Naraka Blade Point is a fast paced battle royale that requires you to be on top of the action every step of the way in your matches, especially in the middle of combat. So today, I thought I'd give you guys a guide that helps you do exactly that. In this Naraka tutorial video, we'll be going over these combat topics. We'll go over the basics of fighting and movement, we'll talk about the different weapons of Naraka Blade Point, we'll touch on what the different characters can do, and finally we'll talk about some of the different types of loot you can find in-game that will help give you an edge so you can take home that sweet victory. All these topics are very important for you to win your games and become a top player, so if that sounds good to you, then make sure you watch the video all the way to the end so you don't miss a single tip. Now it's time to dive right into the guide, so let's get started. First, let's go over the basics of the fighting and movement in Naraka Blade Point. Combat is mainly divided into three actions, basic attacks, focus attacks, and parrying. Basic attacks are done by tapping the attack button and focus attacks by holding it down. Each of these attacks can also be either horizontal or vertical, depending on what button you use as well. Meanwhile, parrying can be done by tapping both buttons at the same time. These three actions interact in a melee combat triangle like so, much like rock, paper, scissors. Charging a focus attack will ignore the hit stun of basic attacks, parrying at the right time can counter a focus attack and disarm your opponent, and basic attacks will eat straight through a parry. If two opponents engage with two basic attacks or two focus attacks, they will clash and cancel each other out. These three basic actions are simple to perform and are easy to keep track of on paper, but it's how well you can mix them up and react to your opponent that determines how good of a fighter you are. For example, one of the first things you discover as a new player is that mashing basic attacks will always result in a 1-2-3 combo with two basic attacks followed by one focus attack at the end which can be parried. Knowing this is crucial as you'll be able to see the third attack coming and get a parry ready if you're in a fight. On the other side of that coin, better players will typically expect you to try and parry, so they will do something else and cancel the combo and try for an extended combo string. One of the easiest ways to do this is to crouch cancel your combo. Crouching allows you to quickly interrupt your action and do something else. It's also very useful for parrying for that reason. In this case, we'll perform two basic attacks, crouch, and perform two more basic attacks. As we said before, basic attacks eat through parries and let you extend your combo. A good rule of thumb is that the hits done from two basic attacks will guarantee one more basic attack if done correctly and crouch cancelled fast enough, so make sure you practice this well to gain the upper hand. On the other hand, if you want to be cheeky, you could sneak in an uppercut attack which is done by crouching and attacking vertically. This will launch your opponent into the air and let you perform yet another combo or convert into a tech chase. A tech chase is done when you knock an opponent onto the ground and follow them as they get up. It's very useful for controlling the pace of the fight and coming out on top in a dominant fashion. Now speaking of tech chasing, you will need to be fairly familiar with how to move well enough to run people down. If you'd like a detailed breakdown of how to move well in Naraka, I did make a movement guide for the beta test back in July and it still applies pretty well today, so be sure to check it out for some cool tips. For today, I'll just mention a couple of things more related to the combat itself than the rest. For tech chasing and mix-ups in general, you'll want to learn how to slide into a focus attack. Doing so is really simple. Simply sprint and then start charging your focus attack. You'll notice you'll still move forward while doing the charge up animation and that's a really nice way to be optimal with your time. Another thing you'll want to be familiar with is slide hopping which is done by sprinting, crouching to do a slide, and then tapping jump to do a little hop. This lets you go slightly faster than sprinting and can even be done in the middle of combat to juke your opponents, so overall a very nice tip. One other tip that I recommend following is to go into your settings and remove the melee aim assist. While this can be useful if you're very up close and personal with your opponent, overall it's just better if you're trying to lead your target for it to be turned off. To close us out here, grappling is a very nice tool to use in combat for a lot of reasons whether you're approaching or running away. Grappling an opponent will stun them for a brief moment which can open them up for a quick follow up. While grappling, you can input either a horizontal or vertical attack. 
The horizontal will unleash a flurry of attacks, which is great for combo extensions, while a vertical attack will have you perform a downward slam, which can knock your opponent down and set up another tech chase. The angle of attack is very important for grappling. If you hit them in a straight horizontal line, a horizontal attack is usually the best for spacing and landing a clean hit. If you're positioned above your opponent, probably best to go for that vertical attack we mentioned. You'll get a feel for it as you go. One last thing I want to go over though is scale rushing. A scale rush is when you attack while climbing or clinging to a wall. When once done, it will make you dash in a target direction and it actually covers a quite a lot of distance. Most players will use this purely for movement, but if you want a good extra option for another angle, it can work for that reason too. Also, some characters have certain abilities that boost the damage of scale rushing, so be on the lookout for that as well. Now before we get into the tools of the trade, I would just like to say thanks for watching up to this point, and if you're enjoying the video, why not drop a like and hit the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. I would really appreciate it if you did. But now, let's get back into the video. Not the first, not the last. Next, let's go over weapons. I will classify these into three categories. Melee weapons, ranged weapons, and finally crate weapons. For those that don't know, crate weapons are dropped by Morris's blessing, which is indicated on the map by this orange marker on the map. Whatever weapon you choose is a good indicator of whatever playstyle you should adapt in your match you are playing in. If you want to poke from range, focus on scrappy tech chases, or if you just want to smork down your opponents with huge damage, there really is an option for everyone here, and you can carry up to two of any kind in your quick slots with the rest being placed in your inventory, so you have quite the breadth of options for you. Now let's get into it. For melee weapons, we have the greatsword, the longsword, the katana, the spear, and finally the dagger. The greatsword is a large and slow weapon with huge damage. It is different from the rest of the weapons because of its ability to completely block basic attacks with its own basic attack, and its focus attack combo comes out on swing number 2 instead of number 3 like the rest of the melee weapons. It's really good to switch to in the middle of combat to mix up your opponent, but you'll have to be careful not to get parried on that second hit. The longsword is my personal favorite and is probably the best weapon for covering attack chase. Its focus attacks unleash a wind slash that can hit opponents much further away from you than normal, and is one of the best tools for covering an opponent's get up. If done right, there is little to no counterplay. It's also got some solid damage to back it up, and while it's not the quickest weapon out there, it does get the job done very nicely. Moving on to the katana, this is one of the quickest weapons out there. While lacking in straight up damage, the combo potential for the katana is the reason you want to pick it up. Its focus attacks come out so quickly that you can even time them just after a parry to guarantee a hit. It's also useful for tech chasing if you're quick enough and are able to move with your opponent. The only caveat to the katana is that its focus attack is one of the few that will not knock down an opponent, so you will need to try and hit the follow up to complete that part of the combo. The spear, otherwise known as the king of all weapons by the devs, is the single best poke and spacing tool in the entire game. The spear has a much longer range than the other melee weapons and possesses some of the best single hit damage in the game. Crouch cancelling into combos is definitely very strong, especially if you can land a dragon slayer. A dragon slayer is done by either successfully parrying an attack or charging a horizontal focus attack to its second charge and landing a hit. While in the Dragon Slayer animation, you'll gain Golden Focus, which is uninterruptible by most things, and you're able to chain these twirls into each other until the combo ends. With high range and high damage, it's easily one of the best control tools in the entire game. Lastly, we have the Dagger, which is new to the release of Naraka. It possesses a lot of similarities with the Katana, being fast and focused on combos, and it seems that most of its focus attacks it can use do not knock down your opponent, including the 1-2-3 combo it has. It looks like you'll have to get creative with uppercuts and other methods to take down your opponents, but we will see how it plays out. Keep in mind as a reminder that this guide is made before the release of Naraka, so I do not have full data on the dagger, but it seems to be very similar to the Katana. Now, we won't spend nearly as much time with the ranged or crate weapons as they're mostly secondary to the core combat of Naraka Blade Point, but I do want to cover them nonetheless. Starting with ranged weapons, the musket and the bow are your typical sniper slash DMR style weapons that fire one shot per action. 
They possess high damage and are great for taking pot shots at long range. The pistol is more of a shotgun that can be charged for more damage in a single shot, great for close range engagements. The repeating crossbow is essentially an automatic assault rifle that runs out of ammo quickly, but is great for tracking your opponents and finishing them off after gaining some space. And lastly for ranged weapons we have the cannon. The cannon is essentially a grenade launcher with a lot of bullet drop and a large AOE on contact. Much like the repeating crossbow, you'll mostly want to use it for finishing off opponents after a close fight, but it also has a good use in squads due to the large AOE. Keep in mind that for most ranged weapons, a melee attack will knock down your arrows and bullets, so be mindful of that if you're third partying a close fight. We're going to finish off with the crate weapons. These three weapons are essentially Naraka on easy mode for the most part, if you know how to use them well, but will for the most part leave you immobile, so you'll need to make sure you're careful when using them. Again, these weapons are found by searching the Morris Blessing crates that spawn in your matches, so be careful if you're going to go for them because most opponents will be looking to do the same exact thing as you. First, we have the Flamebringer, which brings the heat and is essentially a flamethrower. It can deal very high damage at close range. Next is the Swarm, which is like a repeating crossbow and the cannon had a baby. It repeatedly shoots high damage rounds that drop fairly quickly, so make sure you line them up and knock them down. Lastly is the Blood Ripper, which is essentially a chainsaw. This weapon deals heavy damage at close range and appears to also have a blue focus aura while the Blood Ripper is in use, so it may be possible to parry. As this guide is made before the game releases once again, I haven't had a chance to test it, but it would make sense to me. Otherwise, I would suggest attacking from range. And that covers all the weapons. Plenty of options to choose from, especially between melee and ranged options. So pick what works for you and practice so you get good fast. Now we'll very lightly touch on the different characters in the game just to give you an idea of the different tools each one has so you can be more aware of them in game and play around them in your fights. This game is especially friendly to those of you who want to one trick or main a certain champion but it is very very helpful to know what each champion does so you know what to expect out there in your matches. If you'd like me to have more in-depth character guides let me know in the comments down below but today we'll stick to the basics. Starting with Viper Ning, she's a very controlling character with her main abilities knocking opponents back and stunning them with her ult. You will need to break line of sight to keep yourself from being stunned and approach the fight with an escape route in mind. Tarkaji is a very scrappy fighter, especially with his ult which buffs all his core stats with increased movement and attack power. He also has access to a giant fireball that can mess you up pretty bad if you get hit by more than one. So be mindful of that and try not to fight him while he's in his ult. Matari is a sneaky assassin type who can blink in and out of the action and turn invisible with her ult, which does counter Viper Ning's ult as well. While invisible, her blink cooldown is reduced by a lot and it hides her actions to a great extent which lets her sneak in focus attacks that otherwise would be easily seen and parried. So be mindful of that if you're fighting her and really turn up your headphones because you can hear a lot that you cannot see. Timok is probably one of the strongest combo fighters in the game with his basic wisps and targeted tornado ability. It's almost a guaranteed knockup that lets him get a mostly free combo off if he does it correctly, which can be severely oppressive. He's also able to spawn a huge tornado with his ult that will slow and disable anyone caught on the edges. So again, a very oppressive fighter that you'll need to be cautious with. Tian Hai is the monk fighter of the group and his main danger is his ult, which lets him turn into a giant Vajra that has a lot of health and can deal a lot of damage. You'll mostly want to run when he spawns it and attack from afar as it's pretty hard for him to land a grab at range. Other than that, he has a bell parry that will knock back any attack, but other than that, it's mainly his giant Vajra that you'll need to watch out for. Kurumi is a healer that uses umbrellas for quick teleports and heals as well. Her basic ability plants an umbrella which she can be teleported back to and her ult is essentially a massive heal that can save her in a tight spot. It should also be noted that her umbrellas can be destroyed by your basic attacks. For Kurumi, you'll have to take the advantage earlier on in the fight and force out her ult to take her out, but other than that she doesn't have very many offensive capabilities. She is still a really strong fighter though and can outlast you if you're not careful. And lastly we have the new character Yodohime. 
Her basic ability lets her throw out a spirit sword that can either stun or she can blink to. If it's the blink version, the cooldown is refreshed upon taking out her opponents. She can dart around the battlefield pretty quickly, and her ult lets her use a massive spirit sword for three strikes of massive damage. It's relatively easy to dodge, but if it hits, you'll be in a world of hurt. Dodge her ult, and you should be good to go if you play your cards right. And that covers all the characters we know about so far. Again, I didn't go too in-depth, but now you should have a basic idea of what each character can do. Ideally, you'll be able to take this knowledge and know what to look out for if you run into anyone in your Naraka matches. Not the first, not the last. Our last section on loot will be very light, but I wanted to have a place to include weapon and armor rarities, soul jades, and those passive buffs you can find in the world. Weapon and armor rarities do exactly what you think they do. More durability, more damage, and more armor the further up you go. The order is gray, blue, purple, then yellow. The difference between the different rarities is rather small to be honest, so it's not like having a purple weapon against a gray will have too terribly much of a difference, but I would say that finding some good armor is definitely a priority, so keep that in mind if you think you're ready to go for a fight, that armor is a priority in most cases. Now for Soul Jades, these are little buffs you can equip into their own little slot that boost your stats and some can offer really unique buffs. There are too many to list for this video, but I will be going in depth with them sometime later after release in another video. For basics, there are three different types, stat, weapon, and special soul jades. The big ones to look out for are mainly going to be melee resist, health, and then a weapon buff if you can find one. Melee resist and health soul jades are both in the stat category and help you survive in fights so well that it's hard not to recommend them. But then weapon soul jades often give you extra power and extra moves to utilize in your fights and a lot of the time the damage and utility is insane. So definitely prioritize those if you can. That's not to say that special soul jades aren't as good as some of them are really powerful. Most of the time though, stat and weapon soul jades are just your main go-to as they are more easily found and are more reliable. Lastly, for the passive buffs, there are little fruit-like things you can find throughout the map that increase health regen, armor regen, and in particular, dandelions can silence your footsteps, which makes sneaking so much easier. Overall, they're not the biggest thing in the world, but they really do help bit by bit in the middle of fights, so I figured I'd mention them. They could be the difference between dying and living on 5 HP, so definitely grab them if you can. And that about does it for the Naraka Blade Point Combat Guide. I just want to reiterate that while having the knowledge of the combat is a great first step, make sure you practice, 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 and who knows, maybe you'll be teaching me a thing or two in-game when I see you. It's very helpful as a final point to try to grab a friend and just hop in a custom match so y'all can 1v1 each other and really build yourselves up over time. That's something that I highly recommend doing and it's something that I personally will be doing with some of my top player friends that I have in the community. Anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I've been OSK. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.